Imagine you were inside a leaf. It's a sunny day, and the cells around you are glowing with the soft green light. You move into one of these cells, and you see that this green glow is coming from melon-shaped objects called chloroplasts. As you look closer, you see tiny antennae harvesting this light and channeling it down to a reaction center. It is at this point that light becomes life. This process is known as photosynthesis, literally building with light. It is the fundament of all life on Earth. The energy I am using to talk to you right now, the air we are breathing, and even the fossil fuels that power our economy all come from photosynthesis. I'm telling you this because our population looks set to reach 9 to 10 billion by 2050. This is a massive increase in the number of people that need to be fed, and it is way beyond our current capacity to produce food. But believe it or not, we have faced such a challenge before. In the 1950s, the world's population reached 2.5 billion. And for many experts, further sustainable growth seemed an impossibility. They predicted massive famines and the collapse of our civilization, and referred to it as the population bomb. But thankfully, some scientists did not give up. They had a vision, and collectively they brought about an agricultural transformation like nothing we have ever seen before. They quadrupled yields in a matter of years in what became known as the Green Revolution. The man who spearheaded this was Nobel Prize winner Norman Borlaug, who was credited with saving more lives than any other individual in the history of our species. His work was so incredibly successful that in the developed world we went from potential food shortage to food mountains. But this is no longer the case. The population time bomb has not stopped ticking. And that is where photosynthesis comes in. The scientists of the Green Revolution did an amazing job at increasing crop productivity, but they never managed to improve photosynthesis. In fact, some scientists still say that it can't be done. But already, from my own research, I say otherwise. There is a resource out there, a resource which is the fuel of evolution and which we can tap into. This resource is genetic variation. In the case of photosynthesis, this variation manifests as differences in the efficiency at which plants convert light to life. The genetic basis of these differences can be used to create plants which will feed and fuel our future. We must increase the productivity of our crops so that we can buy the world time to reach a point of population stability. In the words of Norman Borlaug, you can't build a peaceful world on empty stomachs and human misery. We need a second green revolution. And photosynthesis is one key which cannot be left unturned.